one of the greatest traditions of motocross near New Berlin, New York, where legends have been enhanced and careers began their climb, especially in the 125 ranks. The Super Six, here are the past winners in the 125 division, Bradshaw, Cooper, Dobb, and Ryan Hughes. No Steve Lampson on that list yet. Lampson is taking nothing for granted, despite, as you see, an 80-point lead in the championship race. Marty Reed is trackside. Guys, Unadilla is famous for a lot of things. One of them is the size of its rocks, sometimes as big as your fist, and when it hits you in the chest, it can literally knock the wind out of you. Now, you'll notice a lot of the plastic protectors on the outside, the guys would wear those normally, but up underneath, you'll see a number of them wearing this very lightweight but very, very protective chest protector underneath their jerseys. Also, a number of the riders are having hand grips mounted, protection right in front, so when they get in on the bike, if they have one of those rocks pop up onto their hand, it won't break one of their fingers. Thank you, Marty. Art Ekman and David Bailey now with you as Tim Ferry checking out the gate. It's tough to get your starting spot uh, dialed in the way you want. It's like watching a baseball player go into the batter's box. I mean, it's just flat ground. But they still sit there and kick it around and get it all the way they like it. That's what the riders are doing here. Typically, they want to make that level. They don't want to start in a rut and have to climb up over that starting gate. You can't go in front of the gate, though. Is that correct? That's correct. But if there's something out there, a big rock or a camera crew, for instance, drags the cord and pulls something in your way, you can ask it to be moved. So as the 125 riders do their gardening work, let's take a look at the Suzuki track map. This track has not changed much over the years, David Bailey. Now, one of the neatest things on this racetrack is the start. As soon as you take off, you drop down in a valley, and then you come back up before the first corner. And as you can see from the layout, it's got everything. Long straightaways, sweepers, sharp corners, some of the steepest hills, and everything here is natural. The Frenchman, Mikel Pouchon, who's coming back from a wrist injury and also a chronic fatigue syndrome, which is, can be deadly as far as results are concerned in motocross. Especially here at Unadillo. There's a couple of racetracks on the circuit where you've got to go there ready. Unadillo is definitely one of those, and I would say another track would be Southwick, where it's so rough and sandy. Mike Kudrowski is game face on here, but he's more excited than ever. Just signing with Honda of Troy, expected to be a teammate of Michael Craig, who just re-signed for another year. That'll add a lot of professionalism to that Honda of Troy team for next season. Okay, we're almost set to go as they start the wrap here at Moto 1 for the 125s at Unadilla. It's Michael Craig, number 17, John Dowd, Larry Brooks, Tim Ferry, but look who's got the whole shot. Number one, Steve Lampson. He's taking nothing for granted, David. Not at all. He's got those little hand protectors that Marty talked about on his handlebars, and uh, with a hole shot, he's probably not going to need them, as long as he can stay out there. <laughs> well, you notice he's wearing the plastic uh, chest protector on the outside. He's been one of the riders who has always, since he was a small youth, rode with a chest protector. He says it just feels natural. And right now, John Dowd is in hot pursuit of Michael Craig behind Steve Lampson. So it looks like the top four or five riders all have on those hand guards anticipating the rocks coming up and being a problem. Remember, Mike Kudrowski broke his hand here in practice a few years ago, so they're all taking the precaution. Lammy also has a special protector in front of the pipe on that Honda machine. You need that. If you get the pipe squished in any way, you give up valuable horsepower. They try to drag all the horsepower they can out of these bikes and see wide open through there. A lot of rocks, lamps, and dancing around. This place will get rougher during the moto. Look how hard packed it looks to start with, though, David. A lot harder than it's been in years past. That corner right there always had about a two foot high or three foot high big loamy berm with all the topsoil they used to have. But the amateurs get to this place first, and uh, a lot of that gets worn out before the pros ever see the track. Lampson with great acceleration in first place out of our camera range right now as Michael Craig's in second. And here, number seven is John Dowd. He's second in the points to Lammy. He's had three second place finishes this year. One moto win at Southwick for number seven. Lampson working his way back to the front. This is the first big uphill where it used to get quite a bit rougher, but now they carry so much more speed into the hill from a new section that uh, it's not getting quite as rough as it has in the past. Another reason why I think it seems faster this year than ever before to me, David, is that there is no moisture, and uh, we've seen a lot of rain on this track in years past. And all that moisture makes it so tough to get down and up that steep hill right there. And a 125, when it's loamy right there, you have to downshift sometimes heading up that hill to keep the motor pulling. But this year, they're getting a nice drive out of that corner. Steve Lampson already out to a four-second lead here at the end of the first lap. He is churning. 
It's always nice to glance over your shoulder and notice the distance getting larger. Helps you relax and get into your flow a lot quicker. Lampson in first. Michael Craig coming off a broken hand in second. We'll be back with more action in a moment. Moto number one, 125. Steve Lampson, our leader. Here's John Dowd. Whoa, he hits a big rock. That berm right there is starting to get deep. It's got a little chuck hole, they call it, coming out of the end of it. And he was leaned in too far. It may have grabbed his fork leg and hopped the front wheel right out of the... Hey, what's that? A little <laughs> shortcut. I'm not sure if that was a shortcut or a better line. It, it looked like, like the, it was less rough. The great escape. Steve McQueen jumping the fence there. He jumped the banners. <laughs> that was pretty slick. He could have gotten him hung up in his back tire, but he didn't lose any time by going wide. So I don't think that will be a problem for him. John Dowd in third place, followed by Team Suzuki's Tim Ferry, who's riding with a new aggressive style. Maybe he realizes he better do something before the end of the season is up. But Roger DeCoster almost given up on Tim Ferry. Look how steep that downhill is, too. Yeah, Ferry has been riding uh, a lot better lately. He sure looks good right now. Look at he maintain a lot more momentum momentum around that berm by letting it drift wide. Starting to close the gap a little bit now on Dowd. Ferry coming off a second place finish at uh, Buchanan. Red butt and we see the fifth place rider Mike Brown who's had his share of injuries this year. The pace to me Art looks really fast. I, I think the track is uh, it's not as rough right now as it will be later on in the day. There's a look at Huffman. Our Suzuki stopwatch to get an idea as to the intervals now. As we go back to Chad Pedersen, number 21, and here's Kevin Windham, 13.4 seconds behind. Another slow first moto start for Windham. Yeah, there's Ali, his mechanic, looking on, wishing he'd have gotten a better start. It, it looks like he's got a pretty good pace going, and typically uh, he's been the fastest guy on the racetrack at times, a lot of times, in fact, but he keeps having to come from behind. He's kind of got the LaRocco thing going on in the 125 class. Buddy Antonez wraps around the tree, and there's Damon Huffman in seventh place. He's in the building process, David. He's working his way back to the front. I'm sure it won't take long before he gets there. Uh, coming through that mechanics area, one of the most off-camber corners on the whole entire circuit. Uh, slow speed, a good place to signal because you get time to look over and read that board. Antonez, a uh, great third-place finish at Bud's Creek with a 3-4 effort. The starts really make the difference in the 125 class, and he got good starts there at Bud's Creek, and not too bad of a start today, battling with Brown right here. And typically, if you can get a top five, top ten start and ride really strong, not make any mistakes in the first few laps of the race, you really open it up and, and uh, put a lot of distance on the rest of the field. Interesting, the line selection here today, because a lot of riders don't like the same line simply because the rock's flying back. Right, and you can see it starting to fly right there, and sometimes uh, there are tracks where you can follow a guy, actually, especially if the pace is pretty good. You can follow him, take the same lines uh, for quite a while, but Unadilla isn't one of the places you can do that because you got so much roost and so much rocks in that roost that you have to try to dodge. Steve Lampson, our leader here in the opening moto, one, two, fives from Unadilla. We take a look at Mike Brown being hounded by Buddy Antonez. An off-camber turn below the uphill move. Very hard to get momentum, but Antonez now is moving into fifth spot. Makes the pass on Mike Brown. And Brown blew that berm at the bottom of the hill. Lost all his momentum on the 125. That's, that's going to kill you. You come into that corner, and you're, you're just saying, okay, now get through the corner fast. You're so over-anxious at times, you'll make that mistake. He went over the berm a little bit. That opened the door for Buddy. Buddy Antonez was in the great position to take advantage of that move by Mike Brown. This is one of the only one-line sections on the racetrack, and actually it's got two berms through it this year, so uh, the drier conditions have really, I think, made for better racing. A mechanical now for James Dobb as you see him here coming off a moto win in the last race at Buchanan. Let's go to Marty Reed and see what this problem is now. Well, you can see the end result of what has happened to James Dobb. He has lost the chain and obviously out of this moto. Let's see if we can swing on over here. James. What happened? I just landed over here a bit heavy, and uh, I think a rock must have got between my uh, sprocket and uh, the chain, and it just snapped the chain. So the rock has taken its first victim, and unfortunately, it's been you. Yeah, but hopefully I'll go back, get all ready, and hopefully come out and try and win the second moto. So James Dobb, the first victim of the rocky road here at Unadilla. Mike Brown in sixth place, but he's got Damon Huffman on his tail. So Brown, trying to avoid going backward, now has the talented Damon Huffman. 
that's a bummer too when you're riding pretty good but not just not quite good enough and what happens is everyone keeps catching up to you and you find yourself having to ride defensive all day long and you're never really able to get any kind of formal momentum going Huffman out for five national events he makes the pass on Mike Brown into sixth place Damon Huffman coming off that uh, could have been a devastating injury to the ACL. It was shredded. It was not blown. And Dr. Stebner went in just to simply stimulate the healing rather than do much uh, mending process. But it's good to see Damon back and getting stronger with each race. Here with the 125s, the first moto at Steve Lampson way out in front. Michael Craig holding strong, looking to tie his best finish of the year. We'll be back. Welcome back to Unadilla, Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Marty Reed as we take a look at 125 action. That's one of the new sections, Art. They took out one of those hairpin turns and just put a straightaway into like a plateau, with what it turned out to be right there. And Wyndham's got a faster line through there than everyone else. Kevin Wyndham, riding Unadilla for the first time, has to come back from that mid-pack start, and he's doing it in grand style. He's taking on Mike Brown and Damon Huffman. Oh, he almost took a very difficult line off the track. Here he's battling with Mike Brown as they go up the hill. He's got good power. Passes Brown. Next in his sights, number 10, Damon Huffman on the Kawasaki. And Brown did a pretty good job of trying to keep Wyndham from getting around him up that hill. He just moved over little by little, and Wyndham had the room to keep going. The track here is so wide. Wyndham using it all. Boy, and he's not letting off that throttle at all as he gets by Huffman. Wyndham has passed 14 riders in five laps. And look at his riding right there, his foot just skimming the ground, his outside elbows up, using the clutch, pulling away from these guys he just passed. When he's on, he's beautiful to watch. And you can tell right here, this is more of a stand-up track as he sits down for the turns. Well, he and Huffman both stand up quite a bit with the when they ride. I think maybe they're a little taller and uh, not sure if it's just their height, really, or if that's just the way they like to ride. Ron Lachine did the same thing. You can see Ronnie stand up through corners and uh, Marty Tripe's one of the first guys to ever do that technique and I, I don't know if it was just when Marty did it it kind of looked like he was just being lazy but he sure went fast <laughs> Mike Brown now starting to hound Damon Huffman wants that position back again to look at number 21 that's Chad Pedersen he's on the move behind Mike Brown every time Brown thinks he's gotten it over with and he doesn't have anybody coming from behind he can relax and try to get into a flow he's got somebody else coming up from behind it's a pretty interesting line he had there too squaring off that corner having to go way wide but I think it pays off in the end Lampson's still our leader in fact he's way out in front in double digits as we see Mike Brown trying to hold his position with Huffman in front of him and Chad Patterson in back number 10 Damon Huffman really showing what he's made of this year coming back from a devastating supercross injury it's good to see him back in it. I'm sure he'll be ready for next year, which is probably all this year is about, really get back into it and get some confidence. And uh, it looks like everyone's kind of taking the same lines. There, Pedersen's going a little bit wider, I think maybe just to dodge that roost. But the only guy I can see right now that looks like he's taking different lines and they're working for him is Wyndham. And it's, uh, I think it's obvious because he caught all these guys and passed them, and now he's already pulled away and dropped down the hill before our camera can catch up with him. Pedersen coming off a sixth place finish at Redbud would certainly like to take on the two in front of him to get a better placement here today. Michael Craig still in second place as Lampson has taken away with it. John Dowd though makes the inside move on. Oh, they contact and Michael Craig kisses the dirt a little bit. That was pretty aggressive by Dowd. He got in there and their lines came together. I think Dowd drifted out there just to make sure. There's another look. Watch Dowd. He's got the inside berm. All that momentum carries him wide. I think Craig uh, probably didn't expect Dow to get that aggressive. And if he'd have known that, I'm sure he would have backed out of a little bit and tried to stay out there. You see Dow looking back. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> That's Steve, motocross. Steve Lampson, John Dow moving into second place with Tim Ferry in third. And Michael Craig picking up and getting back on the track in fourth. You can see it's still a pretty good gap back to that battle that uh, may be catching him. If he can get reestablished in his pace, after that little uh, tip over, he'll be okay because he's got enough of a cushion. Dowd not unknown for putting uh, people down as we <laughs> saw him do a job on Ezra Lusk. Where was that, David? At Mount Morris, I think. Right. They came through an off-camber corner. Kind of the same deal, only that time it was a right-hand corner. and He just kept drifting wide, drifting wider, and uh, Lusk hit the deck. And 
Yeah, it was one of those deals where it wasn't on purpose. Just Dow's aggressive, and if he's got the line, he's going to take it away from him. Well, Lady Luck usually evens things up in this game. Let's go to Marty Reed, who's with another victim of this Unadilla track. Marty? Well, we've got our second victim. You can see Paul Curry. He has taken a rock right underneath his left eye and has been forced to pull off the race course, and that's going to turn into a pretty big shiner. Oh, Marty, it looks like he just got out of the boxing ring. Looks like he got tangled with Oscar De La Hoya or something. He, you know, if he had his goggles on, I can't imagine a rock coming in and hitting him and making that happen, but uh, I can see it with his goggles were off. I can't understand why he would have him off at that point, though. A big battle right now for second place. It's Ferry on the team Suzuki, number 20, passing John Dowd, and he's got second place out of this corner. What a nice move, and he saw how hard he had to get on the brakes and make that corner. Out horsepowered him and picked a little bit better line down that right hand sweeper and then coming into that sharp left, both brakes locked up. So Barry's aggressive right now and moving forward. Well, we always knew he had the talent. He had great technique in his riding skills. But Tim Ferry now has added an aggressive type action to his riding, which has made a, all the difference in the world. Well, I really love to watch him ride. There's the mechanics area again. Dow with a little bit different line trying to square that corner off. Ferry's beautiful to watch when he's on. It's just a matter of uh, staying on often enough. Lampson's still our leader, but Ferry's moved in a second. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Marty Reed from Unadilla. Very impressed at the speeds that uh, these 125s are making it here in moto number one. And you see part of that uh, chest protector shoulder guard has come loose on Lampson. As he's coming, he looks like the hunchback right there. It, I guess it's the shoulder piece just came unstrapped, and that's got to be bugging him just a little bit. Well, and two, he's got to be wondering, hey, will this shift around on my body any if uh, it gets any contact? But he's so far out in front right now, that's the least of his worries. And uh, right now, Marty Reed's making his way over to the mechanics area, and uh, he's with Steve Lapson's mechanic. Let's get the inside. We, we noticed that that, that shoulder, shoulder pad on his left shoulder is coming down. It's okay as long as he's got the lead, but what happens when he gets into lap traffic? I don't know. I hope it doesn't get in the way. I just hope it doesn't hinder his movement in any way, you know? That's my concern. I was thinking more about maybe getting a rock up in there. Yeah, that's not good either. Either way, it's not good. You got to hope pray he doesn't lap anybody then, right? Uh, no, we're not hoping that. We're hoping he does lap people. With an 18 second lead here with the final lap, Steve Lampson is looking forward to trying for his first Unadilla overall victory in his career, which is uh, amazing, really. He's had so many races here on the 125s, and of course, winning the championship last year. Well, he's off to a good start. Look at him jumping about third of the way down this downhill, still able to get stopped for that inside berm, using the clutch a lot, get that thing pulling up the hill. Steve Lampson looking for his ninth moto win in 15 motos. Marty Reed talked with him earlier. Was it one of those uh, places that you dreamed about as a young lad, uh, you know, being able to race where the champions all race? Yeah, I always, uh, you always hear Unadilla, and uh, when I was younger, that's the, that was the track, you know, and uh, now I'm here racing, you know, the last few years, and it's just, it's great to be here. It's one of the it is one of the best tracks in the circuit. Is there anybody that can beat you today? Um, I mean, I would hope not, but I know that there's uh, John Dowd and Kevin Windham, and, you know, there's a lot of guys out there going fast, and especially Dowd, I think this is uh, one of his home tracks, so it's going to be, it's not going to be easy, I know that, I'm going to go out there and uh, just put my head down and uh, not count anybody out. Well, it's not too difficult if you race a perfect race, David Bailey, like he has. The way he's been riding, it's no wonder he's got the big lead that he's got. But the uh, only thing I can think that went wrong was the shoulder pad came undone. Probably didn't do a whole lot for the aerodynamics, <laughs> although that's not something that motocrossers really pay attention to. As Lampson heads to the finish line, the only battle left in this race is Antonez, Pedersen, and Brown for 6th, 7th, and 8th. Here's Lammy trying to finish things up. Oh, the bike looks in great shape. Doesn't even look like it's been in a race as he takes the checkered flag. Moto win number 9. Here's the finish for that 6th, uh, 7th, and 8th positions that we were noting. Antonez, number 22, in front of Chad Pedersen now. Antonez played it smart, coming down the inside, protecting it, and saw what happened earlier between Dowd and Craig. So Steve Lapson goes another win in the record books in his dominating fashion this year at 1-2-5s. Tim Ferry, his second, second-place finish in a row. John Dowd, 
third, Wyndham and Craig rounding out the top five. Let's go to Marty Reed, who's with our Moto number one winner. Obviously, the race was no sweat, no strain. You don't even have a fleck of mud on your face. It was a smooth ride. Yeah, it was. I mean, I got a good start, and that's, uh, shoot, that helped a lot. And uh, I just rode, rode smooth and rode hard and uh, just kept a good pace up and uh, tried to not make any mistakes. How worried were you about the shoulder pad? Because I talked to Goose about it. He was concerned, and I was, because I, I, I was worried you might get hit with a rock. I wasn't too worried about that. I was just worried about maybe if uh, something happened to the other side, then I'd uh, have the thing all over my body. So, uh, But it didn't bother me at all. I just kept my head down and uh, rode hard. No rocks hit you? Uh, no, I, luckily I, uh, I was out of the roost, you know, winning, so I uh, didn't get very dirty and saved a lot of energy, too. But even in the lap traffic, it, uh, no, nobody kicked anything up? No, it wasn't too bad. Everyone, I got around everyone pretty clean, and uh, nobody really, you know, really tried to stay ahead of me. See you in the second motor. All right, thank you very much. All of a sudden, Tim Ferry, number 20, has gotten serious about this sport as he takes second in the first moto here at Unadilla. Let's go back to Marty. Well, second place picked up uh, where you left off. I mean, uh, another good, strong ride in a moto. Yeah, it was. You know, at the beginning there, uh, that was riding pretty good. But uh, I knew I was as fast, if not faster. So I figured I'd hang behind him for a little while and uh, he made my plan. And uh, he knocked one guy down, so that was easier for me. All right, I guess the big question is, do you have anything left for Lampson? Because he just ran away in this first one. Uh, I didn't have moto, but... Um, Hopefully in the second motor I'll come out in second or first and he'll be in second or whatever and uh, we'll see. You know, if he, uh, he's riding good today and uh, obviously he, he won a pretty good margin, but uh, I'll try to get my Suzuki out from this podium again. Can Ferry become only the third rider to win an overall this year? We'll find out when we come back. The crew's of course very busy between 125 motos as we go into the pit area. The Eastern 125 Supercross champion, Mikel Pashon, has had his problems uh, in the outdoors. Let's get an update with Marty. First off, you know, all season long, we've talked about your know, physical fitness and how at times you just felt like you didn't have enough energy. And, and all of a sudden now you just told me that, that you now have a real problem that, that is the reason behind all this. Yeah, I got a um, chronic fatigue syndrome. It's uh, something that a couple of riders had um, in the past. So. We we find that um, two months uh, I mean one one month ago, but uh, for the moment it just got me tired. So kind of track like today it's gonna be very hard. But some track like Troy where it's uh, more jumps, you know you uh, you can rest a little bit more. That'd be okay. But uh, for the moment I don't know. Now you already mentioned this is gonna be a very demanding track uh, with this situation. How tough is it gonna be out there? Very tough. The first moto would be I think. Pretty okay, but second model would be very hard because with that with that virus, I can't very um, recover very very fast. I need a, a long time. So between motors, only one hour between motors, it's pretty short. So all the time, the second model it's more it's more harder. But we say I think um, I hope to to do the best. The rock damage on the pipe in the first moto. You can count on wasting a couple of exhaust pipes here in a deal unless you have a pipe guard. Team Chaparral liking to go with brand new pipes for the second moto. After moto number one of the 125s, it was obvious, David, that Kevin Windham had the fastest bike on the track, uh, but he got the slow start. Wouldn't it be something if he got a better start against Steve Lampson? It'd be something. I've been waiting for this battle to unfold all year long. They definitely are the fastest guys in this class when they're on. Uh, Windham is on today. Too bad he didn't get the start he needed. He's definitely got the speed to run with Lampson. Wyndham and Lampson have both signed contracts for next year, but there's some riders out there that haven't signed yet. Uh, salary drive time for Tim Ferry? Well, you know, contracts can be really distracting, but it's obvious for Ferry, who's been riding well the past few weeks, certainly good in the first moto, that it's a motivating factor. And uh, for me, I hated it. I didn't. I wanted to get it over with, get it signed in March. And the longer it went through the year, the more motivation it gave me to get the job done. The one two fives are at the starting gate. Let's go there now. As we get ready for 125 action, one of the things that's really interesting is the choice of starting position. Steve Lampson is about a dozen gates from the post position, but come all the way over to the pole, far inside, and there you see second place finisher, Tim Ferry. Ferry obviously thinks that the straight line to turn number one is the advantage. We're gonna find out. Well, Ferry's got the straightest and the, probably the shortest line to the first corner, but it's a lot sharper turn when he gets there. Typically, the hole shots come from just inside of the middle, but if Ferry gets there first, uh, he'll have the advantage. Casey Johnson having all kinds of problems there at the starting gate, having to pull off the gate. He can't get it started. 
Yeah, that's no good either. When you're a rider and you're trying to think about the race, and I remember I once on a 500, I could get my bike started. Finally, Roger DeCoster, who is a master of starting a 500, brought my bike to the line running just in time. Johnson was kind of bummed when my bike shut up, to tell you the truth, because we were both going for the title at the time. Let's go to Marty. We've got trouble at the starting gate. 58, Casey Johnson cannot get his bike to fire. They're trying to push it. Now they finally have got it started. He's pulling into position. But now he's just had to do about a 50-yard sprint to help get his bike going. Casey Johnson finishing in 36th in the first moto. Having his problems today now. Whoa, they got a little false start there at the beginning. They were lucky they didn't even hung up. Kevin Windham, though, with a great whole shot start here with the second moto. That's Kevin out in front. Drifts all the way out to the banners. You can see they've taken the disc out there and churned up the racetrack. So that's all smooth. They're running through there wide open. But Windham right now, clear sailing. A lot different from the first moto. And the Suzuki number 390 is David Kratz in second place from Southern Pennsylvania. Great start for him. I remember that. Some of the first big races I ever got into, I accidentally got a good start. I'm like, oh no, what do I do now? <laughs> Wind out in front, and there's Lampson on the left side of your screen. He's about seventh right now. Yeah, he was tossed right in there with Ferry, and it looked like Damon Huffman. So all those guys pretty far off the pace. Those are the guys that I would expect to get up there and challenge Wyndham, and they got a little work cut out before they even get up to see and take a look at him. Wyndham coming around the mechanics area now. Jeez, look at the lead he's already got. Michelle worked into second, but already about 25, 30 yards back. Mike Brown, Buddy Antonez, number 22. And then Kratz, still holding in the top five. Oh, Michael Brandis goes for a ride. Unscheduled, of course. Almost took Ferry down with him. Ferry had to go way wide to avoid him. Put some water down on the racetrack right now, and Wyndham got through there quick, but that's going to get everyone muddy. When Lampson came by in that previous shot, his front number plate was covered with mud. Kevin Wyndham is just taking away with it, very similar to what Lammy did in the first moto. Now, even more impressive, I think. Brandis just getting going. Probably some stuff is bent. Yeah, he's going to go and straighten the front end out. Way off the pace now. That's the worst feeling in the world when you're dead last and you got four or five laps to go before you even catch up with the back markers and you know the, the thought of even getting a point and getting 20th it seems like a impossible task but you still got to do the job wind of our leader Pashon and Mike Brown number nine Brown has had a good day here at Unadilla he's a tough rider who usually shows his strength toward the end of a race but he's gotten good starts today he's gonna need him too Look at how much water they put on the racetrack. Now they have to because they got to keep the dust down, especially in these main spectator areas. But really makes it a mess that first lap, especially if you don't get a good start. Brown getting by Pashon into second place. But a year and a half away from our leader, Kevin Windham. Yeah, he's already gone. These guys are in a pretty good little battle. Brown, a little different from the first moto where he was getting passed by everybody. Now he's doing the passing. So apparently got things worked out between motos. Maybe made a few corrections to the bike and renewed enthusiasm. Boy, for Pershon to have a chronic fatigue syndrome, that'd be like an Olympic diver having vertigo. Kevin with them. Mike Brown, Pashon, the top three, as we go to moto number two here at Unadilla for the one 2 fives. We'll be back with more action in a moment. Welcome back to the Unadilla Valley Sports Center near New Berlin, New York. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Marty Reed bringing you the 125 action out of moto two. After Steve Lampson ran away with moto number one, it is Kevin Windham running away with moto number two and Lammy having to fight his way up through the pack. Right now, Mike Brown in second place, number nine, Honda of Troy Rider. After passing Mikel Pachon, who's now in third, the Frenchman out of Le Mans, France. Coming into that new section again, this used to be like a little uh, switchback section. Now they just run straight. You see over the top of that plateau all the way into this big uphill. They carry a lot more speed into it. Watch, they don't even let off wide open all the way up the hill. It used to get a lot rougher. Today it's wide open. You don't get any rest either, do you? Because you don't get that much air time on this track. Now, like Pichon said earlier, it's talked about Troy having so many more jumps, and it does. 
a lot more man-made stuff. Practically all of it's man-made, and you get to rest when you're up in the air like that. Here, you just bump after bump. Now with water on the racetrack and the places that were smooth, and you could rest. You got to fight the slick. Equal distance between second, third, and fourth, and guess who's in fourth? And he is on the come, having a little trouble there with the berm on the on the tight turn. He tried to cut it with Steve Lampson, but he didn't lose any time on Pichon. He's got a long ways to go to catch up to Wyndham. He probably can't even see him. But if he finishes up in second here, that wouldn't be too bad of a day, and he'd still pick up the overall. So I think it's first things first. Get into second, see where uh, Wyndham is, and then decide if it's worth making that kind of a push. Remember, he went down here a couple years ago pretty hard. Right in this gravity cavity. He was leading in points at the time. Had a pretty good lead, in fact. And then uh, his teammate, Doug Henry, ended up winning the championship that year after that crash. Back-to-back -back titles for Henry, then he moved up to the 250s. I wonder what would happen with Lampson uh, if he wins the title again this year, where he's going to go. be interesting to see what Honda decides to do. Corkscrewing around the trees now, Mikel Pichon in third, following Mike Brown. And Kevin Windham, oh, there goes Pichon. That's a tough section right there because you come over that little plateau there and it's real hard and slick, and some of those rocks get brought up on the inside. There's a, there's a different angle. Front end is just going to wash out. So he's just short of the berm. He tried to hit the beginning of that berm and square out of it, but he needed to stay in it just a little bit longer. Once he cut out and got onto that flat, slick surface, the front end just went away. Lampson not on the brakes now, but he had to put on the brakes pretty quick not to run over Mikel Bichon. So it's Lamy now in third spot behind Mike Brown. Now it's a factory Honda versus a Honda of Troy, souped up production. I think Lampson's going to have a little bit of an advantage. He's definitely got a lot more confidence. Rightly so. If I'd won that many motos, I'd be pretty confident too. <laughs> totally different from last year when Lampson, of course, the injury and had to fight back from a 60-point deficit to take the championship in the final moto. Nice, easy, clean pass of Mike Brown by Steve Lampson. I'm Mike Brown right here. I'm going to hitch a ride, learn everything I can, copy some of those lines, try to dodge the rocks, but learn as much as I can. Try to keep everybody off my tail. At, at the best, uh, or at the worst, really, if he can stay where he's at, he's going to get third, and that's going to improve on his first moto. Well, Steve Lampson in good position for the overall once again. As Kevin Windham, though, had an eight-second lead after the first lap, and he's continued to extend that. So I don't know if Lampson has enough time on this track unless Wyndham should make a mistake. Well, you never count Lampson out. The guy never gives up. And he's been the one that's dominated this class, so anything can happen. Wow. Ooh, buddy buddy Antonez, yes. Good save right there. That could happen to Wyndham, too. All he's got to do is go down, lose his rhythm, bend a lever, and Lampson's right back in the picture. Well, that's a good example of how slick this track has become with very little topsoil like in years past. Damon Huffman now up to seventh place, trying to work himself back into shape. Huffman in the first moto was in ninth. Nice pass there right there by John Dowd, coming down to the inside and taking advantage of that corner where Pichon went down a little earlier, just took away the inside line. Dowd's getting good at that. <laughs> See if he can do it to Huffman. Makes a nice cut turn right there. Working their way through one of the rougher sections on the racetrack. You see, because of the, the water and that off camber and it's choppy through that, it's become a pretty technical section as they try to get a run up that right-hander kind of sweeping uphill. A lot of guys have gone down there in the past. Remember a year Hannah went down there so bad. He got up and twirled all around, didn't even know where he was. Couldn't find the motorcycle either. Was laying <laughs> over in the deep grass. Mikel Pichon trying to battle back after being as high as second place and then lost the front end. I've never seen these guys get such a good run at that uphill. Usually you've got a, there'll be riders sitting all around the bottom of that hill in practice trying to figure out the best way up it. That's a wild off camber right there. The first time I ever came here to Unadilla and saw how steep that downhill was, I kind of thought it was a joke. I thought you just have to go down with the brakes locked up and still miss the corner. At the bottom, you don't get much room, and then it goes back down into the woods. Here comes John Dow to the inside, the passing of Damon Huffman. That just line's... barely caught that outside berm, David. <laughs> he didn't catch much of it, but he was determined to stay on the racetrack, looked over to make sure he had that clean pass. Same place he got Craig in the first moto, but at least Huffman didn't go down in the process. 
So John Dowd once again coming from behind to show a lot of power here through the mid-race section. Kevin Windham incidentally has a 16 second lead here in Moto2 over Steve Lampson in second place. If Lammy just holds on a second, he's got the overall victory. What a contrast to John Dowd who's covered with mud having to come from a little further back. Kevin looks like uh, this is his first lap out there. He hasn't even got a speck of dirt on him and everything's coming together good. He's got a huge lead right now. And he's in that flow, when he's in that zone, he's untouchable. Well, it's interesting. He gained a lot of experience with his first moto. That was the first time he's seen the Unadilla track. Let's go down to Marty. Oh, what a difference a great start will make. Yeah, he's got a good start, and the track is a little muddy, and he got out, and everybody else is fighting in the mud, so he just took off and went pretty fast. He also looks like he's pressing this first 10 minutes, but now Lampson's in second place. Does he have enough to hold him off? Uh, I'm sure he does. He's working really hard, so he's, got, he's in shape. In shape indeed, and way out in front, Kevin Windham making a mockery of the rest of the field here at Unadilla. He could not be in shape, and the way he's riding, uh, still put on this kind of a performance because he doesn't use any energy. He's wheeling over all the big holes. He's sitting down at the right places. He stands up, as he pointed out a little earlier, Art. He stands up a lot more than most of the other guys and saves a lot of energy out there and still goes fast. Look at the lead. The Suzuki stopwatch ticking off the seconds. Wyndham over Steve Lampson. 16.5 now on the half lap. Number 34, you see Yogi, his nickname, that's Ezra Lusk with problems. He had a second and a third in the last two events overall, moving into the top five in points. Having his troubles here at Unadilla. This is that technical section I talked about earlier where Hannah had gone down and you can see back behind him, that's a big whoop to do that's a hole. I would be, I would assume that he landed in that sideways trying to carry his speed to that corner and the bike is swapped out. Our Suzuki field summary, Kevin Windham way out in front of Steve Lampson looking for the overall, Mike Brown. We'll have a battle with Buddy Antonez when we get back. Back to the old and very traditional Unadilla Valley Sports Center in New Berlin, New York. Pichon trying to save some energy, running in ninth. Remember, he was in second at the very beginning of the race. So he's dropped back considerably and said this track would be tough for him and it's starting to show right now. That chronic fatigue syndrome is it's impossible for him to recover between motos and have a lot of energy in the second moto. That's really sad, too, after such an outstanding Supercross season, winning the Eastern 125 Championship and looking with so much promise. Another rider with a lot of promise who's had injury problems is right behind Pichon, number 14 there on the Primal Honda. Robbie Raynard is coming back, his first race since separating a shoulder. Yeah, kind of a neat line, too, as they dropped into that back section. He used one of the braking bumps to jump over the crest of the hill, land going down in. Stands up a little bit more than some of the other riders, too. I think towards the later stages of a moto, when guys are getting tired, that's usually a sign. You'll see him start standing up a little bit more and searching for better lines, trying to hop over all the bumps. And Raynard's doing that now, which is understandable because he had that injury and wasn't able to train. So he's coming in here not tip-top in terms of his physical condition. So both he and Pichon are riding around uh, just trying to save the energy. They're both wounded. Buddy Antonez, Tim Ferry, and then John Dowd. That's a good threesome for a battle coming up here on the Unadilla track. Dowd doing the same thing that uh, Rayner did, jumping over the crest of that hill. Makes the pass, it looks like. Sure did. Made the pass on Tim Ferry. Nice move. He just set it all up by having a nice line going to that corner towards the back section, positioned himself to the inside. and. Uh, it's a completely different style for Dowd compared to Pichon and Rayner who are just trying to save their energy and get through this moto. Dowd is strong. He's 100% and he's going to get tougher as the moto continues. It looks like he's not finished yet. Uh oh, Chad Pedersen is down. Chad having a pretty good afternoon of it. The pro circuit rider does not look like he's in good shape. He went over the handlebars is our report. Buddy Antonez in fourth place and John Dowd right behind him. This is the battle right now as Kevin Windham is way out in front. Our leader, Steve Lampson, a lonely second place. This is the battle. If it weren't for a couple of bad starts, John Dowd would be contending for the title right now. Coming from behind to take a third in the first moto. He's in fifth right now with his sights on Buddy Antonez. Antonez with a couple of good starts and then fades a little bit as the moto goes on. 
Antonez in the first moto taking a sixth place finish. You can see from this camera angle how beautiful this place is. Why they call it Unadilla Valley. The crowd a little more mellow this year than it's been in the past. This place is known for the wild spectators. The hill people, they call them. Good pass. Dowd and Antonez finding it out. Antonez cannot hold on to the position. And John Dowd has moved up a notch. He keeps making passes on that inside. He's got two places on the racetrack where I notice he keeps making his passes, both on the inside. Catches the guy by surprise, runs it in a little deeper. By the time the guy gets into the corner, Dowd's already in the way. He has to just give it up. David, earlier you were mentioning about the beauty of this area. It's one of my favorite rides from a city airport to a track is this very position where you go through some of the most beautiful farmland in upstate New York. Uh, Chad Pedersen now, they've got him sitting up. He's with the uh, medical personnel. He landed so far in front of his bike, he really had a rocket off that thing. All right, David, Marty. <laughs> want to go to a party later? Well, yeah, just after I said the spectators are mellow, they want to party with us, Art. I don't know. Wyndham way out in front. Lamps in the lonely second with Brown down and Antonez. The top five. We'll be back with a race to the checkers in a moment. Welcome back to Unadilla. Moto number two of the 125s. Our winner of the first moto, Steve Lampson, currently in second place, but he's 20 seconds behind the leader. That says a lot for Wyndham. I mean, maybe Lampson's taking it easy, but Wyndham's pulling away from the most dominant guy in the series. Let's go down trackside to Marty. Goose, seems like the lead stays about 19, 20 seconds. Are you sort of telling him just to stay there because he wins the overall with a second place finish? Yeah, he's doing it real good, consistent lap times. You know, the, the leader, if you get the good start, you're gone. You get those first clean laps and you're away. And for him to try to make that up, he doesn't need to. So I just wanted to let him know that he's doing a good job where he's at. Pretty good job. 80 point lead coming into the race in the title chase, David. We figure if he got an 80 point lead, he can stay home and go to the next race with a 30 point lead if Dowd wins both motos. So it's a nice place to be. Well, the team manager, Wes McCoy, said, Do you know how many points you're ahead? He said, I don't want to know. <laughs> well, last year at this point, he was like 80 points behind still or something. I mean, he had so much to make up. This year, it's the complete opposite. And he has the luxury of being able to take it a little easy at times, same way Jeremy can do in a 250 class. Kevin Windham last year, of course, as you see him going down into the gravity cavity. Wow, that could have been pretty costly. That's where Lampson went down a couple years ago. Just jumped down a little bit too far to the outside in that powdery stuff, and the, the G forced out in there, and he was so far forward, he almost tucked the front end under. Kevin Windham with injuries and mono last year. Hasn't seen a lot of these tracks. In fact, this is the first day he's raced at Unadilla. Earlier, Marty talked with him. I found out just prior to doing this, I didn't realize this is your very first time running at Unadilla. Yeah, first time of, you know, just always as a kid, grew up uh, watching it. And uh, last year, you know, first year uh, on the outdoor series, you know, I wound up getting hurt and having a uh, mono during this race. And uh, this was one of the ones I missed out on. So this is the first time. Does this hold special significance for you as a kid growing up like so many other runs? Yeah, you know, I've always looked at the track and, you know, just as a kid, you know, I always wanted to ride the track. You know, it looks so good on, on TV and, uh, you know, all the tracks do it. And this is one of the first times that I've actually, you know, got to ride it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always been in the back of my mind that I wanted to. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that I'm getting the opportunity. A little further back on the track there as he's coming down the straightaway, you saw him look over to his left. He's looking at Lampson, who was coming the other way. That's Wyndham's girlfriend standing on top of the Yamaha semi. It's hard to spectate this racetrack uh, for the mechanics. And the heel clicker with Kevin Wyndham so far out in front. Of course, Wyndham taking his first overall victories at Glen Helen and Mount Morris. The only rider besides Steve Lampson to win an overall this year. The checkers for Kevin Wyndham. Oh, good comeback effort for Kevin after a difficult first moto. Kevin Windham, Steve Lampson in the second place, Mike Brown all the way to third, John Dowd and Tim Ferry are top five. Antonez holding on to sixth place. Robbie Rayner getting into the top ten. Let's go down to Marty, who's with Kevin. We talked with Ali, and, he, and we talked about the fact what a difference a start makes, but you really exploded. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been so happy with my riding. You know, I just been a little down about the start, and uh, you know, I've trying, been trying to concentrate as hard as I could. You know, maybe I was concentrating a little hard, too hard, but I, 
got it done that time, and uh, man, it just felt great to get out there and you know not have any dirt in your face that time. Now, I think one of our cameras caught you with about four minutes to go with a little bit of bobble. Did you did you scare yourself there for a minute? Yeah, I was hoping y'all didn't see that. Uh, that scared me pretty bad. Uh, but uh, I, was, I landed in a little bit of powder. I got a little bit sloppy up on top of the hill, but uh, you know, luckily I recovered and uh, rode smooth from there on out. Congratulations, great ride. Thanks a lot. Kevin Windham notching his third moto win of the season as you see the overall results. Lamps and Windham and Dowd making the podium. Ferry just off the podium with a good two and five run. Mike Brown looking stronger as the season goes along. Marty Reed is with our overall winner. Well, you didn't get the start that you won in the second moto, but you drove a very smart race. Yeah, I did, and that's uh, my whole goal is just to be smart and uh, I definitely want to win the motos that I can, you know, but uh, unfortunately I didn't get a good start and Kevin got out there and uh, we I couldn't make up no time on him and so I just decided to, you know, play it safe and do nothing stupid. You like this place a little better now? Yeah, this is my first win here, so that's great for me and uh, I'm just happy, you know, happy to win and, uh, you know, I got to say my Honda worked great, my mechanic Mike Gossler and uh, Cliff White all did a great job today. We'll see you next round, Troy. Yep, thanks a lot. Lampson with the 1 2 today captured his sixth overall in eight races. As we take a look at the Suzuki point standings, he increased his points lead to 89 points. At this rate, David, he could clinch the title at Washougal. Although it looks like Lampson won't be touched for the title, uh, the way Wyndham is ridden today, we could see some real battles develop between these two as the season closes. And perhaps if Wyndham keeps riding like that, he could take over second from his teammate. Back with the big guys, the 250s, in a moment.